Hey guys. Hi, Boca. You wanna say hi to YouTube? Say hi to YouTube. Hi, Boca. Yes, Boca says hi to YouTube. Hi guys. Um, I kind of promised you guys I'd be doing a uh, update video on pretty much what kind of happened. And so, typical North Carolina weather. It's raining-ish, drizzle basically, straining-ish. And so. The other night I was talking to my daughter, well, other morning I should say, because of the time zone difference. I was talking to my daughter and um, I was also confirming my, my flight and a whole bunch of other things. And I've got a dancing pug at my feet. She's fucking adorable. Hi baby, hi baby. <laughs> She's adorable. And, um, I was trying to forward on email. Basically, the, the fault lies with me. I let the cat out the bag by mistake. Um, basically, what it was was I was trying to figure out what my daughter wanted for her birthday as a birthday present. And I was on eBay looking up sneakers and stuff for her and Jeffree Star makeup stuff and, and, and all this fun stuff. And I, and I didn't realize that I had I was going through my emails confirming my PayPal and a whole bunch of other things and I clicked on my uh, flight itinerary copied it thinking I was half asleep didn't have enough caffeine in me long story short I, I linked her by mistake my itinerary of my flight and she was like this isn't shoes dad this isn't makeup dad this is a flight and I'm like and I don't know how to delete messages on Instagram. <laughs> and so she was like, why does it say you've got a flight coming into London? And the cat was immediately out the bag. It was gone. There was nothing I could do about it. So I'm not blaming my ex, Michelle. I'm not blaming her mum. I'm not blaming anyone in particular. The fault lies with me. And so I figured she knows now. There's no point in hiding it. There's no point in, in you know, there's really no point. So I did a big uh, a post and I learned how to do Facebook live videos. Yay. Nah. <laughs> um, but I did learn to do a Facebook live video where I told, I, I did the announcement to all my followers on Facebook. Um, this is why I'm doing this coffee time with Cobra, but there's no coffee because coffee pot's empty. Um, it's like, what time is it now? It is 12.30. Um, so yeah, having a bit of a late start to the day. Um, like I said, going through a whole but 15 years worth of stuff. I've got to get a haircut. I'm trimming my hair up a little bit because I want to look my best. Um, to me, flying has always been a privilege. Um, you get people that show up in like sandals and shorts and a t-shirt, you know, like it's just an everyday thing, like he's riding the fucking Amtrak or something. It's like, no, motherfucker, have some fucking self-respect for the stewardesses and everything else. They don't want to smell your freaking cheesy feet. You know, come on, shower, bathe beforehand. You know, do the TSA a solid. Do the TSA a favor, okay? And stop buying full-size shampoos and stuff because they're, they're going to throw it away. What part of you don't understand that? If it's an internal flight from, say, California to New York or whatever, it's not like your shampoo brand is not going to be in New York, okay? So don't fly with it. Okay, plain and simple. Do the TSA a favor. Don't fly with a knife. Don't fly with a gun. Don't don't fly with anything fucking stupid. You know, come on, man. Do the TSA a favor. Do them a solid. They're trying to keep you safe, right? So just do a solid. Call up your airline. Hell, check your airline's website. They'll have a list of what you can and what you can't take. If you're on oxygen, you let them know 24, 48 hours before your flight. And guess what? They can sort you out with the TSA. Start book up. They can sort you out with the TSA. They can say, oh, this is our passenger, this is their flight number, this is their passport. You know, when you immediately you get scanned or beeped, it's gonna say, hey, you're on oxygen, you know. So you go through the, the stupid machine that blows on you instead of the, of, the, of the pat down, you know, kind of thing. And I'm cool with that. You know, just let the airline know beforehand. That way you can streamline going through the TSA. It's not a freaking headache, it's not whatever. And no, I am not saying give up your freedoms and blah, 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 and all that shit. Honestly, if time isn't a factor, get in your damn car and drive, okay? Plain and simple, it's what I did. 
me and the girlfriend could have thrown the car up on a pilot truck uh, and just got a flight into Charlotte. Would have been done in, in, two, in under two hours and then waited like freaking a week, week and a half for our stuff and the car to get delivered. Or we could just, uh, oh, I don't know, take our car and just enjoy the road trip, you know, and spend time with each other, you know. And that's what we did. We got in the car. We, we did, you know, we, we did preventative maintenance, check the tires, check the oil, check the belts, check the hoses and everything else. Because that's the thing that's going to get most of the wear and tear. Same as your brake pads and everything else. And, and, and you know, and the rotors. And guess what? Start the engine, set the GPS, and we were gone. You know? And we purposely picked the route. It wasn't the quickest, yes. You know, it wasn't like go through Colorado and this and take I-84, Charlotte. 32 hours later that wasn't it at all we actually went down through the panhandle of texas through oklahoma through through uh um through arkansas through you know we we, we took a long trip took us f four or five days you know we took our time because that's what we wanted to do okay to see if we if we meshed as a couple whatever that whole advice of, of before you marry someone go on vacation with them is the truth okay because there were times when, when when I was stressed there was times when my girlfriend was stressed there was times when our dogs were stressed okay there are times when it didn't even sound like the car was gonna make it you know we were gonna be stranded in the middle of bumblefuck nowhere but you know what the car made it thank you Cali 08 Dodge Caliber you know it made the trip it's made that trip now twice First time to bring my girlfriend to me, and then the next time to bring her home. Here. It has made that trip twice. Uh, first time, she just took the highway, so it was just highway miles. Um, second time, it was, we took, you know, we took a, a southern route, and whatnot, because I wanted to go through Louisiana and stop by and see a friend of mine that lives, uh, <laughs> lives out in Louisiana. But unfortunately, we couldn't um, because of the hurricane, and so we ended up cutting a lot of our trip short. That we had planned we, we were looking at taking seven to eight days you know we had reservations at hotels already booked and everything else and paid for that we had to cancel and then get our money back and everything else and uh, i don't know what that dodge caliber has for a gas tank but it's fucking amazing literally full tank from damn near empty 20 bucks 20 bucks from damn near empty Bink. $18, $19, and that was even when it was like $2.38, $2.40 a gallon. I was like, God damn. Yeah. You know? And she just keeps going and going and going and going. So I love that damn car. It's amazing. Um, but got here and found out a majority of our stuff was destroyed or lost. Um, so again, I can't really talk more about that because there is legal there is legal action pending so i can't talk about that that's that's something i can't talk about um what else um so yeah daughter knows family knows um <laughs> i leave on the 28th and i land on the 1st of march so that'll be fun i'll be jet lagged to hell and all i'll probably want to do is have a mars bar a can of coke a shower, a shit, and a shave. Well not, well, not a shave, but a shower and a shit. And then probably sleep. And I mean sleep like there is no tomorrow. Last time I did the flight into London was in 07. Yeah, it was in 07. And I got to my nan's house in, in Peckham. And stayed up for a bit I, I tried to push it as far as i could and then it got to about seven o'clock at night and i was literally just bobbing for cock just doing this while trying to have a conversation i can't sleep on civilian planes i just cannot sleep on civilian planes you can give me xanax you can give me freaking uh, uh um chantex you can give me whatever freaking uh, uh um medicine you think that will knock an elephant out i'm just wide awake i just can't sleep on military planes out like a light why because those fuckers are designed to survive a crash 
Civilian planes are not, plain and simple. They're built to a price point, that's it. And safety is not even a concern. They are built to a price point. I hate to say it, but it's true. I've got friends that work for Boeing. I've got friends that work for freaking, you know, uh, in aviation, and they'll tell you. My friend Paul, who lives literally just a couple of houses down, he he's a he's an aircraft engineer and maintenance, and he's shown me. He's physically shown me documents that state that Boeing and a whole bunch of others know that if they add one piece of safety equipment, it almost like goes up by 300, 400, 500 thousand dollars for one jet, for one 747. So the average price tag of, you know, 22, 24, 25 million literally jumps up to almost 28, 29, 30 million per plane. Airlines are not going to drop 30 million for one jet. They'll drop 21, 22-ish, you know, a little bit under that for a brand new one, but not 30. No way. And so they go without certain safety features, you know, that aren't necessarily mandatory. I mean, they do follow the TSA and, and, and various other governmental bodies. They do follow those. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't fly civilian airlines. Far, 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 far from it. You can. I'm just saying the majority, uh, especially like European airlines. Again, this isn't me picking on any airline in particular. Okay. I'm just saying I've, I know this firsthand because I've seen it. Again, I've got friends that work. Uh, as maintenance and baggage and you name it at, at let's see Heathrow Standard Gatwick um, Paris um, Hamburg you freaking name it that, that work in various countries in various airports and they've all told me that when it comes to basic maintenance they've seen basic maintenance field reports that says fix it enough so that it will fly not that it's safe just that it will fly because the airlines know it's cheaper to pay out in a lawsuit than it is to pay out to repair the plane. It's more cost effective, okay? And I hate to say that, but it's true. This is why I can't sleep on a civilian plane. I mean, I would quite literally just sit here, <clears throat> what the fuck was that? <clears throat> what the fuck is that? <clears throat> what the fuck is that, you know? And like I said, that's because I know that they're built to a certain price point. Not the average Joe knows that, but I do. Um, and again, being in the military, I've been around military aircraft. I know that they can take any aircraft fire and still fly. Can't do that with a 747. Sorry, but you can't. Oh, it can do a barrel roll. Yeah, uh, a minor barrel roll. It can't do barrel rolls like an F-14, like an F-16, like an F-4. Like a, an F6F Corsair, it can't do those sort of barrel rolls. It can, because it's structurally limited by the wingspan of the plane. Okay, the smaller the wing, yes, the less the lift, but the better the rotation. Basic aerodynamics. It's not hard. So those big ass wings on a 747 are not meant to literally go without them going snap. Um, do we not need that? <clears throat> So, for all the people watching this video that are about to fly a plane, sorry for scaring the crap out of you. I didn't mean to do that. Much. <laughs> I just... Uh, yes, the beard is staying. Um, a lot of people keep asking me about the beard. Uh, the beard is staying. I promised... Uh, I promised the girlfriend I would grow it out for a year to see if it will grow out bushy or if it will grow out viking E. If that's a word. Um, and... Some friends have given me tips about using hair conditioner on it and constantly just brushing it straight, you know, brushing it one direction, <laughs> one erection, <laughs> um, kind of thing. And then I've got friends that tell me just to let it grow naturally and it will just do what it wants to do. Well, my hair is naturally curly. And the last time I let my beard get like this, I mean, I'm having to hide my, my, my down here by brushing it under my chin. I mean, it, it's long, I mean, it is long, you know, but notice when, <laughs> so now you can see what, what I'm dealing with here, kind of thing, see, it is naturally long, see, um, but yeah, I'm having to brush it against my jawline, not down my jawline, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, my daughter knows, um, 
family knows. I'm not sure if my mum or my nan know. They were tagged in the post, but they haven't responded or anything, and I don't think they will because, well, my mum's not exactly tech savvy. Um, nor is my nan, God bless her. I love my nan. And yes, I will be seeing my nan. I haven't seen her in 10 plus years. And it's been 10 years too long. And the last couple of days have been very stressful for me. Um, mostly because my daughter has been calling me in the mornings. And I love her for that. I do. I love talking to my daughter. Molly Bet, I love you, darling. More than life itself, you know this. I do love you. But we start talking about family and nan. And then I get all emotional about it. Hey, girlfriend. And I get all emotional about it and I start to cry and she starts to cry and it makes me cry even more and yeah, so. Emotionally, I am... Emotionally, I'm crossed between stressed, losing my marbles, and numb. This is something that we've, that I have needed to do for quite some time. And not just this coffee time, but just in general, the move. It's something I've been wanting to do since 2013, 2014, but I couldn't due to finances and due to my passport issues, um, which I, had, I now have those resolved. I have my new passport in hand, um, and I'm glad I'm leaving now because if I leave, if I was to leave next month after the Brexit vote, apparently my passport would be invalid because it says European Union on it. So if you're getting a new passport, if you're English, okay, if you're watching this and you're English and you're getting a new passport, okay, don't, hold off. Hold off until after the Brexit. Because if you get it now and you try to travel with it and the vote goes through and England leaves the EU, you may not be allowed to leave the country that you're in. Because the passport is from a country that's no longer recognised. Um, it doesn't mean England doesn't exist anymore, or Great Britain, or the UK, or whatever you want to call it. It's because it says on the passport, European Union. Now, if it didn't say European Union on the passport, they won't be able to hold you. So the new passports that are getting printed and reissued come after the, the 30th of March will be royal blue, like the original passports, because, no, sorry, the original passports, passports were black. The new ones, then they switch to royal blue, then they switch to burgundy. Um, the new ones that are going to be issued are apparently going to be royal blue and have the, the, the royal crest on it and stuff like that and all that fun stuff, but it's not going to say European Union on the top. It's just going to say a, 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 part, a document of Great Britain. That's it. It's not going to include Scotland, it's not going to include Northern Ireland, and it's not going to include the EU. So... That's what I've heard. They're just, they're just rumors that's floating around out there. Um, so in a way, I'm glad I'm leaving now because that way I, don't, I do not have the finances to buy another passport. I just don't. Um, this literally has drained my bank account to the point where it's almost in the red. I think I've got like maybe 13 cents in my account. So, yeah. But um, that aside, that aside, um, it's good because I, I, I will get to see my daughter I'll get to see my grandmother um, I'll get to see my sister um, I'll get to meet my cousin's two boys uh, <laughs> whose birthday is on the 2nd of March but because I'll be jet lagged unfortunately I won't be able to travel to Lancashire to meet him because you're looking at a, a 6 to 7 hour drive from London to Lancashire I will be dead, literally. I, at that point, I would have been conscious for probably close to 30-something hours. I would quite literally be dead. It would be... I'd be sleeping throughout his entire birthday, you know? And that, that wouldn't be fair to the poor kid. Um, so I might, I'm, I'm probably going to swing up after his birthday. Um, 
and while I'm up north, I'm got to swing by Cambridge to see my grandmother, to see my mother, um, so she can meet her, 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 her second cousins, Cause and a whole bunch of other things. They're uh, my cousins' children, so they're my se they're, they're my daughter they're my daughter's cousin second cousins, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know family. There you go, just family. I'm gonna put it as family. So um, my daughter's gonna be fingers crossed coming with me for a week. Um, that's what I've got it earmarked for is a week. Um, I do have a job interview on the 3rd of March. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I do get that job. Um, and it's going to be like a week course where I get my bouncer security card. So there'll be that. That'll be fun. Um, I did bouncing before, before you needed your CID card. Um, ages ago, I mean, like early 2000, like 99, 2000. So I've been out of the game for a bit. Uh, now you need a, a CID card. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to get the funds together to get a CID card and uh, get my bouncer security card and then uh, work the doors, you know what I mean? And uh, that'll be fun. Uh, that'll be some it'll be some nice money coming in it, it won't be what I'm used to getting paid um, I know woof indeed young lady but it will be it will be some money coming in if that makes sense so something yeah as they say 10% of something's better than 100% of nothing and so yeah so that's going on right now and I'm literally watching a squirrel try to knife fight a bird I swear to Christ Hello, Bradley. Here's a Brad Bradley. He's got a uh, gum infection, and he's got to have his one of his teeth removed here um, soon. Uh, what I'm doing with him, sadly, is I'm rehoming him with the Humane Society um, because he's a Brit an American Staffordshire Bull Terrier, not a British Staffordshire Bull Terrier. England will not let me um, bring him in because um, he's technically registered as a pit bull. Um, their laws, not mine. Nothing I can do about it. Um, even if I was to move to Canada, I couldn't take him because Canada is still part of the British Commonwealth. Or so I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure anymore. I know they use our Queen's face on their money and all that fun stuff. So yeah, they'll, they'll be that. That'll be fun. Not. Just kidding. Um, so yeah, I've, I've already gone to the interview with the Humane Society. They've checked him out and they checked, his, they scanned his chip and whatnot. And yeah, so one of the handlers there um, helped with the rehoming of the Michael Vick uh, dogs, and he did somewhat recognise him. So that's a good sign. You know, he said he's got a lot more, a lot more grey on his snout, but he does recognise him. So that's something. Um, so yeah. It's pretty much what's been going on guys uh, some things I can talk about some things I can't talk about um, if you have any comments leave them in the comment section down below uh, don't forget to give the video a like and if you're new around here please hit that subscribe button um, I am trying to upload more content um, on a regular basis but with me packing to move and whatnot and stuff there will be a bit of a, a gap but uh, I am working on that guys so until then guys I will see you all later